Uber versus taxi. An Uber driver delivered a fatal blow to a taxi driver. He's dead. Three months later, no charges are filed. Let's talk about it. Welcome everyone. Mark here from Uber Hints. This story is going to be rather troubling. There is a video accompanied. I'm going to tell you right now, I am not going to show the video here. It's a very short, brief, three to four second video. I find it extremely disturbing, so I'm not going to show it on this channel. I don't think that it adds any benefit to the story. If you want to find it, you can search it out yourself. It's very easy to find. However, I want to talk about the content and what happened. This story comes to us from my favorite area, Chicago, and um, it's, it's a strange one. So I'm going to read some of this. Uh, there's a variety of different sources. This one, I believe, came from um, NBC, perhaps. A family is demanding justice after a newly released surveillance video shows a fatal confrontation between a taxi driver and an Uber driver in the West Loop three months ago. Now, for those of you who aren't really familiar with Chicago, the West Loop area, as I interpret it to be, now, as much as I try to forget Chicago, I can't help it, um, West Loop is kind of out there by the river where I-90 comes down. Um, I can't think of a landmark out there. I guess maybe Union Station might be in the West Loop area. Chicago people, you can help me out. But that's kind of the area we're talking about. So just west of, of downtown. These images will haunt me for the rest of my life, said son Raman Tungakar. As his life literally poured out of him, he was alone. During his final conscious moments, he wasn't surrounded by people who loved him, instead by strangers. The video shows the moments after a verbal altercation between the 64-year-old cab driver, Anas Tungatar, Tungakar, I'm sorry, T-U-N-G-E-K-A-R, and an as yet unnamed Uber driver on September 2nd. I'm kind of curious why we don't know the name of this Uber driver. Three months later, it is painfully evident that this attack did take place. This confrontation did take place. It seems like in our society, every time there's any kind of a minor infraction, any kind of an unbased allegation, the names come out and oftentimes we assume guilt. And yet this one, when you have almost irrefutable evidence in the form of a video, we don't know who the guy is. Just kind of strange. Chicago Police Department, can you talk to that one? After complaining that the Uber driver damaged his side view mirror, Tungakar turns away from the parked car and begins walking toward his taxi. Then the Uber driver steps out of his car, approaches Tungakar from behind, and Roundhouse kicks him in the head. He falls to the ground, striking his head on the pavement. Now you can see why I do not want to put that video here on my channel. I'm going to describe it a little more thoroughly for you. Apparently what happened, the backstory, as I understand it to have happened, was the taxi driver was in front of the Uber driver. The Uber driver pulled away. I'm guessing, I don't want to make assumptions, but I'm guessing that the Uber driver may have been angry. Now please understand, my channel is a commentary channel. What I say is my own personal opinion. And so I'm allowed to make statements like it appears he was angry. I think in news reporting, unbiased reporting, they shouldn't say things like that. However, uh, generally speaking, I don't think that a calm, rational thinking human being kicks someone else in the head and kills them. So here's what happened. The taxi driver pulled in front of the Uber driver. The Uber driver, and I'm gonna guess, out of anger, probably frustration, why are you pulling in front of me, pulled out too quickly, clipped his outside side mirror. Now the taxi, the 64 year old taxi driver, followed the Uber driver pulled in front of him again. This is the way I understand the story. Here's where the video picks up. He walks out of his car, does not approach the driver's side at all. He very quickly and uh, with purpose walks to the side, flips the mirror, 
doesn't break, it doesn't damage. You know how mirrors can flip? They're designed to work that way. Flips the mirror, turns to walk back to his car. At that point, the Uber driver jumps out of his car, runs up behind the taxi driver. The taxi driver is now at the front passenger corner of the Uber car or the rear passenger corner of his own car. So he's near the sidewalk part. And the Uber driver comes up behind it between the two cars and lets him have it right to the side of his head. The driver goes down to the pavement. Uber driver gets in his car. Several people, four, five, six people come running up. Several of them try to stop the Uber driver. That Uber driver kept, he would have barreled right through the people. Had someone just stood there and not got out of the way, he probably would have killed two people. Because someone actually had their hands on the hood of the car and was backing up, trying to prevent him from moving, and the Uber driver continued to drive away. Major League Jackass. This guy is not only a danger to a person that he killed, but he's a danger to anybody. If he's clipping side view mirrors, he's physically attacking people because of a verbal altercation. He is threatening to darn near run over human beings. Good Lord, why is he still out there? Let's continue with the story because he is still out there. According to the family's attorney, Michael Gallagher, Good Samaritans ran to Tunga Car's aid and tried to prevent the Uber driver from leaving the scene as I just described. He suffered brain damage from the impact and later died in Northwestern Memorial Hospital. I don't know if the impact was from the kick or from his head hitting the pavement because he dropped like a lead balloon. He just went down. Chicago police brought an individual in for questioning but released him within 48 hours even though the violent incident is classified as a homicide. Loved ones are looking for witnesses who may have seen the incident and can identify the driver to police. Doesn't much matter, we kind of know who the driver is. Um, we've got it on video, we have the car on video, they have brought somebody in. Why charges are not uh, pending against this person, I don't know. According to the Chicago Police Department, they had forwarded their information to the district attorney's office or the city attorney, whoever handles those incidents in uh, either the city of Chicago or the county, uh, uh, the Cook County. And they were given back to the police for further investigation is where I understand the story stands right now. So it's not that the police gave up. It's that the district attorney wants more information. What more is there? The taxi driver took no physical aggression against the individual. Flip the mirror. The Uber driver was absolutely, unequivocally, beyond any shadow of a doubt, the aggressor in this confrontation. Now, why is this important to us? I do want to talk about a couple of things. I am never going to say that, um, I hope I'm saying his name right, that Mr. Tungakar was responsible in any way. However, and I know I'm going to get pushed back on this because people, when they watch these videos that have a lot of emotion, never listen to what I say. So listen carefully to what I'm saying right now. His actions led to his death. He wasn't responsible for his death. The only person that's responsible is the Uber driver, but his actions led to it. And here's what I mean. When he got his car clipped, what's appropriate action to take? Get the driver's license number reported to police. That is the appropriate action to take. Now, if he was going to confront the person, a verbal confrontation, although I wouldn't recommend it, would have been preferable to going up and physically touching the vehicle. The vehicle didn't appear to me was damaged. It looked like he just flipped the side mirror. Nevertheless, when you have someone like the Uber driver who seemingly was a volatile, aggressive person, Actions of uh, physical actions, like touching your vehicle, having some some physical contact, is enough to set off these violent, aggressive people. So, if something here, here's what I hope we take away from this: if something like this happens to us, number one, get the information. He followed him. He knew what the car was, the make, the model. He knew where he was at any given time. He knew he was an Uber driver because we have our branding, right? He knew his, his license number. He knew everything. He could have very easily reported this to the police as a property damage hit and run incident. End of story. Instead, he took 
matters into his own hands. And that was the unfortunate part. Again, please understand me. I am not saying that it was his fault that he was attacked and he got killed. It wasn't. What I'm saying is when we get put, uh, put in situations like this, I would hate to see any one of you watching this video right now take those kind of actions that can set other people off. Trigger actions is what I like to call them. And when you stop in front of someone, when you block them, when you get out, when you physically touch your vehicle, every one of these things is getting higher and higher and higher. Should the Uber driver have gotten out and physically attacked that individual? Absolutely not. It was a criminal act. He should not have done it. But if he would have taken the license plate, reported it to police, you know, he'd be with his family right now. So it's really unfortunate. Chicago police get on the ball. Charge this miscreant. Now, the other thing that happens every time we see a story like this, what it, it, it doesn't do well for us, for Uber drivers. Uh, I don't know. I don't know where to go from there other than it's a lesson for us, a life lesson. Don't let our own anger, our own frustration with something that happens to us make us act in an equally irrational fashion. You know, protect yourself. That's where we're going to leave this one. As always, I encourage your comments down below. I know that this one is going to be full of emotion. So just try to, um, you know, try to not make these personal. Try to keep your comments fact-based if we can. And let's be civil. As always, I encourage you to share and like the video. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I'm Mark with Uber Hints.